Hello gamers, it's SoftKitty99 and today we're back in House Flipper. We're at the house at the Azure Shore with that beautiful view through the big French windows here. In the last few episodes we started doing our house downstairs but we failed to put in some doors so I think the best thing to do now is to put in at least an external door. And we don't actually need many internal doors because we've got a lot of an open plan um, style of house here. I think I want to use one of the newer doors for the front door. Maybe this one? Uh, or maybe... Hmm, let's have a look at the different colours of wood on these. I don't think I've used this one before as an external door. I'm always a little bit nervous about doors with lots and lots of glass in them. I mean, in real life, I'm always worried about them um, being potential easy access points, so I, I tend not to use them. Also, because you've got this glass, people can see straight into the house. But this particular house has got all these big French windows and things, so it's got an easy viewpoint from lots of different directions. So I think maybe that fits. That's actually a really nice, pretty door. So I think for the bathroom door, I think we want to go for something similar in an internal door, if there is something like that. I think perhaps what are these capulous interior doors might be the way to go, because especially for the bathroom, because there's this version here with only the one little tiny window in it, that's much more suitable for a bathroom door, isn't it? Because it gives you more privacy. Oh, look, the little panels. You can actually change the colour individually. Oh, no, that's interesting. So you could have, like, a different colour in each of the panels, couldn't you? So you could have... Oh, look at that, yeah. So you can have a different colour in each of the panels. And the frame. And this gives you a lot more customization to match your colour scheme. Oh yeah, that's really cool. You can, you can make it sort of fit into any type of colour scheme, couldn't you? You could even make it like a modern door with everything being a different colour. Especially if you like paint them all. So if you like had a matte finished door rather than a wood door and, and do all the panels in different colours, you could kind of make it very modern, couldn't you? But for this one, we, we're sticking with the very wood, beach, sandy feel. So I kind of want the paler colours. I don't think I like the surround the door frame being the same colour as the door. I think we want a contrast in there. I think I like that with the two panels inset into it being in the same colour as the frame. I like that. I can't believe I've never used that door before. I didn't realise it was so pretty. Really like that. Um, so while we're doing the doors, I want to keep the doors in the same theme. So we want to use the same type of door for the bedroom that we did in the last episode. So yeah, I think we want to use the same type of door on this one. Because we kept that sandy colour and scheme throughout, you see. Really love that painting with the boat on it as well. Right, so we want the same door here. Let's put that on before I forget which one we've used downstairs. And then I think this is the final interior door that we're going to need in this particular house. So it's a capulous interior door and we're using American Elm as the main colour. And then we just want a slightly darker colour for the surround. And this time we're going to use all the glass panels in it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right, so what we've got now left to do is this two-room open plan area on this, like, mezzanine floor. So this is where we're going to be working today. I think that I'd like to make one of them a bedroom, like, for children. And then the other section kind of maybe a bit of an office space, possibly some sort of sleeping arrangement for if you have extra guests, because you're always going to have people that want to pop over and visit at a beach house, aren't you? So, with that in mind, I think the daybed, I think this is the only style of actual proper daybed we've got. And I want it to stay in theme with the house, so we want the sort of beachy, sandy, blue seashore feel to it. So I think that, 
that paler blue is the better one. I think the darker blue is just too dark f to match with the colour scheme that we've got. And like I said, I want to kind of make it a little bit of an office space. So the same space that we've got this bed in, we're going to want a desk in as well. So that if people come on holiday, they've still got somewhere they can work if they've got homework or office work or something that needs to be done while they're here. So if we have the day bed up against the wall there, and then we've got this corner opposite it where we can add a desk space and maybe a laptop. So I mean, it's not going to be a full size office with, with lots of permanent work in mind. It's just meant as a temporary place where you can just do whatever little bit of work you've got to do while you're on your getaway weekend. And then the other section I want to turn into like a children's bedroom. So I think bunk beds is probably the best use of the space. Um, so let's have a look at the different colours and things that are available. I like the fact that you can change the drawer in the bottom. But I think for this particular colour scheme I'm going to keep it the American Elm to match in with the rest of the bed frame. And like I said we want to go back for the blue sea and beach. So the blue from the sea and the beachy colour, sandy colours for the woods. So we're going for the American Elm for the sandy colour with the wood and then we're going to have the blue duvets and sort of a, a sandy beigey pillow and then a crisp cream um, sheet on the bed. I think that, that matches our colour scheme the best. I don't want the bunk bed to overlap the windows so it's going to have to go on the wall at the left over there because that's the only big wall that gives a little bit but that also gives more privacy because the sleeping area is kind of tucked away hidden by the separation wall so I think that's the best privacy space for that as well yeah because they're from the top of the stairs you can barely see the sleeping area can you so that's really good so we're going to want some sort of storage maybe a shelf a little wardrobe thing and then we're going to want to add some toys and a bit of play stuff in there. Not something that looks a bit, a little bit fun, so maybe like this stepped version. I want to go for the American Elm again, and then we can add a few toys and things in. Yeah, I don't think that's going to look right in the corner. In fact, we probably want to try and fit in a wardrobe or something in the corner, don't we? So, yeah, let's move it a little bit further away. Maybe underneath the window, if I can adjust the position properly. Yeah. And then we're going to want a big light wardrobe thing in the cor uh, corner of the room, I think, yeah. There's some nice pieces for the children here, really. I quite like these big wardrobes with the chest of drawers kind of built into it as well. We've used this before and we've had different colours on all of the drawers, so that we've had like a, a multicoloured thing. But I think if we stick with the all blue frontage, it just really matches the shore and beach theme. Yeah, so we could put it right in the corner or we could put it near the um, balcony railing. But I don't like it near the balcony railings. I want to like, have a play area over there. So we put it right in the corner. Um, yeah, let's use this big colourful children's table and then put some multicoloured chairs and stools and things around it for a play area then add a few toys and things into the shelves and around the room and then maybe a big rug I think that's kind of going to be the idea for this little children's room area up on the mezzanine though to be honest you wouldn't really want super young kids left with a big balcony area although it is nicely railed off but I uh, still think it's a little bit dangerous for kids to be totally honest Yeah, and definitely not an area I'd feel um, super comfortable with little, really little kids in. Yeah, so we're using different colours as like the theme for the house. So we're going with the closest things we've got to the beachy blues and sandy yellows and things. So yeah, we'll have to use the, the real yellow one. That's the closest we can get to two beach chairs and two sea chairs. Yeah. I think that's going to work quite nice because it adds a little bit of colour and you really want a little bit of colour in a kid's room. 
We've not really got space for any more furniture in this room. I would like more storage for children, but it's a beach house more than a, an everyday house. I think that's probably going to be enough. Right, so let's think what we're going to... Ooh, fluorescent stars. I wonder, should we like make a, a little like design on the wall in the fluorescent stars, maybe? Uh, yeah, no, I don't think there's enough space above the um, bunk bed, is there? I think we're going to have to put it near the table. What I'd like to do is use different colours and different sizes of the stars. I haven't used these before, so I don't know how big the different sizes are. Is extra Oh, extra large isn't huge. I was just worrying that it might be super large. But then a really super large star might be quite nice to just put on a wall as an individual item. Yes, yeah, so the extra large star isn't that big, actually. So yeah, let's lose, use a variety of colours. Let's see how small the smallest one is. I'm quite surprised there's not a huge variety between the smallest and the largest looks. So we've got the, the largest one at the, the top right in the blue and the, the uh, green one at the left is, is the smallest one. So it's not a huge variation in, in sizes. So we're going to kind of like ma make a little, yeah, it's kind of like a little moon shape, comet tail <laughs> sort of design on the wall there. Just add a like, little extra bit of colour, a little bit of fun for the kids. Now, what toys should we add into our room? I like to use a variety of these things. I think a ball's always good. There's quite a big garden and there's a beach, so you're definitely going to need a ball to play with. So we'll just stick that in a corner and then we want some of these little blocks. Ooh, let's have one of these gigantic ones. It's got to be blue, of course, for our colour scheme. Now you can use that either as a building block or as an extra seat as well. And then we'll put some of these little building blocks. Let's put a variety of different shapes and colours here on this um, shelf unit. Let's try and get one of each of the different shapes on here, shall we? And a variety of colours and things. just want these shelves to look quite interesting. Yeah, so there we've got all of our primary colours. Let's try and add an extra one. So we've got a couple of shelves that have got two on and a few shelves have just got one on. Let's add the bridge at the bottom down here. And next to it we'll use the bluey one. That's quite cool. Have we missed anything? Oh, a pyramid. Yeah, let's pop a pyramid in. Uh, where shall we add that? Yeah, just put it over there. And now we're going to want... Now this teddy I think is quite big. Let's go with the sandy colour. Um, yeah, will it go? Uh, yeah, maybe turn him around. Beautiful. Then we want something for the top of the bookcase, I think, to sit on top. Do you know, I use this bunny all the time because it's the perfect thing to add on top of a little surface, isn't it? I'm going to go with the blue colour, of course. Yeah, in the middle. Bunny in the middle. I do kind of feel like we want something on top of each of those three sections for that uh, little cabinet, though, for the bookcase. Teddy bear? Yeah. Every kid's room has to have cuddly toys. Stuffy woofs! Actually, it isn't a puppy, so we haven't got a woof woof in the stuffies. <laughs> Oh, books. We haven't had books to the bookcase yet. So let's have a quick look what else is in this hobby section. So it's mostly books and then bikes and a few surfboards and things. So we'll add at least one book there to the bookcase. Okay, it's not a bookcase. It's a storage unit. <laughs> there we go. So I think that's probably enough. Do you know what would be really cool is like an art pad and some pens in the kids section. 
So that's just a pad of paper with some pens on top of it, like felt tips or crayons or pencils or something. That would be a really cool addition to the kids area, wouldn't it? I think that's about the only thing that, that, that majorly is, seems to be missing, right? So we want a nice big rug, like I said, and we want to kind of make the area where the table and everything is kind of soft. Maybe the rectangular carpet crossy is going to match our... Oh, that's too big. Much too big. Right, we need a smaller size. So the rectangular carpet rossi in the light blue is prob possibly what we're going for. Mm. Yeah, I think so. I, I think the flowers is just too much for the scheme we've got. Mm. Tiles, maybe. Uh, what do you think? Is that Actually, that might be better than the other one, mightn't it? Tile version. Yeah, maybe. Oops, wrong button. Move it across, turn it uh, a little bit closer to the railing. Oop, oop, having trouble moving it. Oops, you can do it, Kitty, come on. Oops, no. Mm. The size of it and the shape of it, I was just struggling to get it in the position that makes it look right for the table. Oh yeah, perfect. That's great. Yes, I like that. Yeah, so we've gone with the rectangular carpet tiles in the lighter blue. Uh, just quick look to make sure there's nothing else that we really want to add to this area. I think we're probably done at this point, but I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. There's like three different surfboards there, so if you wanted like a surfy theme downstairs or something, you could like mount them on the walls probably. That could be quite a nice addition to a surf theme, couldn't it? See all these emergency exits and things, I'm not quite sure why you'd use those in... Uh oh, there's that one, isn't there, with the um, former paintball arena place, isn't there? So maybe, maybe they were meant for that. Should I add a little bit more storage? Actually, I'm not sure, there's, is there a colour scheme that will work for this room? Maybe, maybe the blue might, but it's more for a g more girly theme or an older person's room, isn't it, style-wise? But I just want that extra bit of um, storage look, so if we use it as a pale blue, it can look like we've got a little bit of a toy storage chest thing going on near the beds. Yeah, there you go, that's the kids' rooms finished, I think. I like that, I like that little mural with the stars on the wall as well. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. I like that. I'm happy with that one. Good job, Kitty. Right, so what are we missing? Oh, yeah, the um, workspace. So we want, like, a little desky workspace area. So, um, desks. That's what I'm looking for. Office desks. Mm -hmm. There's some nice gaming chairs in this section. Um... I think we want a corner desk, so it's one of these two there. Let's have a look what sort of size they've got and do they come in the American L? Um, yeah, so the May corner desk in the American Elm is the one that I think is going to work best here. Now we want a chair with it, but I don't think we want a gaming chair. I think we want something slightly more office -y. So the light-coloured office chair in the blue. Perfect match for our colour scheme here, you see. And like I said, it's, it's not meant to be a serious working area. It's just meant to be a little desk area for you to use while you're away on holiday if you've got any emergency things that need to be done. So a whiteboard there so you can write notes to yourself and the family to remind you to get things done. I don't think we're going to want more storage in this office space because I don't want to over clutter this balcony area. We will need like a laptop I think. I think that's pretty essential for most families these days. Sometimes the lap oh gosh these laptops are expensive. Ooh, oh that looks very chunky. It's got lots of things sticking out of it as well. Oh, that's the only laptop. Oh, it's so expensive. 
I just wanted to be use it as a piece of decoration. I <laughs> didn't realise it was going to eat up great big chunks of my money to do that. But I think we really, really need the laptop in this area. Uh, what else are we going to need? I don't want to overdo the room. But I think we'll probably need a clock. Because if you're going to work and your family's at the beach and stuff, they're going to want you to meet them for meals playtimes and things so you're going to have to make sure you keep track very carefully of the time otherwise you're going to get into serious trouble right so let's pop this right above the desk so you can't miss it now should I add a painting or is that just going to be too much for the room I don't think we want any more like crazy decoration or anything Hmm. What should I do? Should I add a painting? Uh, maybe above the bed? Picture brush movement? Maybe? Yeah, above the bed. Yeah, because that kind of matches our colour scheme again. And it just adds that little bit of colour into this particular area. So I think that that is everything done there. So there's the kids' room with a little bit of colour and there's the office space and the day bed for extra guests that pop up before your holiday time. So that just leaves us with the downstairs for the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. From SoftKitty99, goodbye and happy games!